Be unto you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus the Christ. This is the day that the Lord hath made, and he has commanded us to rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. God has allowed us the opportunity to connect together one more time. We thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedules to be with us tonight in our Wednesday night recharge. We thank you so much for your continued prayers, for your continued support, for helping us in this part of the vineyard. We believe that prayer, prayer, prayer changes everything. Do you still believe that? We believe in the power of prayer. I'm standing in the need of prayer if you're standing in the need of prayer, I want you to put your name in the comments and we're going to connect my faith to your faith and whatever it is that we need from the Lord. We believe that God is able to do exceeding abundantly above anything that we can ask, think, or even imagine according to the power that worketh in us. And we thank you we so much, the Lord. so we much believe. for being with us this evening. Amen. And just in case you hadn't heard it today, we love you and we need you to survive. Amen. Please put my name and my family name in those comments. We need your prayers. Amen. God is good all the time and all the time God is good. And I'm wanting to know tonight that if you need a miracle, God is still in the miracle working business. Miracles still happen. I need somebody to type that for me, please. Miracles still happen. Don't you sway. Don't you faint. Don't you give up. God is going to come to your rescue. And I want to tell you tonight that God is working it out. 
This is how I want to encourage you tonight. I just want to give you a word of encouragement tonight. God is working it out. Would you put that in the comments for me, please? All capital letters. God is working it out. Amen. And one of the most encouraging verses in the entire Bible is found in the Apostle Paul's letter to the believers living in some extreme persecution in the city of ancient Rome. And he says it like this, Romans 8 and 28. You know it. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God and to those who are the called according to his purpose. And I want to encourage you tonight and let you know that whatever it is that you're dealing with, whatever it is that you're going through, it is working out. Amen. Jesus can work it out if you let him. So this passage has brought me some great hope. It has brought me great hope when I have gone through some extremely difficult hardships in my life. And now that I have experienced some things in life, I can say that Romans 8 and 28, it means even more to me now than it did in the past. Because at this stage of my life, it is much more than just hope. It is my life experience that God will work it out. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Sister Joyce. God will work it out. Thank you, Sister Tanyana. God will work it out. And so I want to share some things that sometimes God has worked some things out in my life in such an amazing way. And I want to share some things with you tonight to let you know that you need to expect things to work out. So the first thing I want to tell you is, number one, God provides. I want you to type that, please. God provides. And one of the most amazing things that I have discovered over the years is that God truly, he truly provides even in the midst of extraordinarily difficult circumstances. Have you ever found that out about our God? And he generally does it in ways that I would have never expected him to do. And many times, many times, God has taken me through a path of loss only to bring me into a pasture of abundance. And I want to tell somebody right now, get ready, get ready for abundance. And God gives and he takes away, but I have always found out that he ends up giving me more, more than he has taken away. Expect some more. And most of the time that he would not have been able to bless me in such a way if he had not taken something away first. Amen. And so sometimes God blesses and provides in unexpected ways. And I want you to receive what I'm telling you tonight because God is going to provide for you in an unexpected way. Amen. The next thing I want to tell you is that God is going to work it out and he changes hearts. I want you to type that for me, please. God changes hearts. He actually has the ability, amen, the power to change our hearts. And at times he has changed my heart to conform to his perfect plan. And other times I have seen him change the hearts of other people in order to accomplish his will in my life. Bible tells me in Proverbs chapter 21, the king's heart is in the hand of the Lord like the rivers of water and he turns it wherever he wishes. Get ready for God to turn some hearts in your favor. I need y'all to hit the heart button right now. I want to see the hearts flowing. Get ready for God to turn some hearts. Thank you so much. Turn some hearts in your favor. 
The next thing I want to tell you is that God is working it out and he protects. Number three, he protects. Would you type that for me, please? He protects. And even as God protected the children of Israel in the midst of the plagues in Egypt, I have seen it with my own eyes. I have seen God protect me and my family. I've seen God protect others, the ones who we love. I have seen God protect the people in our church. I have seen God protect my friends. Amen. I have been in the midst of where God has protected us in some extreme hardships. Does anybody have that testimony? He kept me. He protected me. And there have been some times in my life when I felt like that I was experiencing a setback. Does anybody know that feeling? But after allowing time to sort things out, glory be to God, I was able to see that God was actually taking me out of the way, amen, out of the way of a greater harm that could have befallen me. And God was truly protecting me. Amen. Does anybody have that testimony? He protected me. I want you to type that in the comments. He protected me. Amen. And whatever it is you're going through right now, God is working it out. Number four, he empowers. I want you to type that for me, please. He empowers. And another profound thing that I have seen in my life over the years is that God has the ability to empower me through some of the challenging events in my life in a way that I could have never experienced without God. And God will never leave us. Amen. He will never leave us and he will never forsake us. He won't leave you. I need somebody to type that in all capital letters, exclamation point. He won't leave you. Amen. And he tends to give us the greatest amount of his divine power when life is in those darkest moments. Have you ever experienced that? Thank you, Sister Nessa. Have you ever experienced it? Thank you, Missionary Hill. Have you ever experienced that God has protected me? Glory be to God. It's working out. That's what I'm telling you tonight. Whatever it is, everything is working together for the good. Number five, God confuses the enemy. Would you type that for me, please? God confuses the enemy. And so even when you feel like somebody or something is trying to torment you and seems like they are getting away with it. Have you ever had an experience in life when you were going through a difficult situation and it felt like the enemy was getting away with it? I want you to let you know that you can get that out of your mind. Amen. Because even when you cannot see what God is doing, you can rest assured that he is at work even in the hearts and even in the minds of your enemies. And I want you to be excited because justice will reign. And God has the ability to confound the works of the wicked. Amen. He's confusing the enemy right now. Somebody needs to receive what I'm telling you. Your enemies are going to be confused. Everything is working together for the good. The next thing I want to tell you is that God strengthens. Would you type that for me, please? God strengthens. And many people have heard this. Whatever doesn't kill us will make us stronger. Have you heard that before? And we find that to be pretty true. Whatever doesn't kill us makes us stronger. And so it's clear. It's clear that God uses adversity sometimes to make us stronger. And so the key that when you're going through your situation, the key is to run to God and not away from him. Amen. I want you to type that for me, please. Run to God and not away from him. Thank you, Brother Brandon. Run to God and not away from him. So God has used 
He has used some trials to strengthen me. Can I get a witness out there? I said, God has used some trials to strengthen me and to the point that I can now withstand some hardships that I would not have been able to stand if God had not strengthened me. And I am thankful for his spirit, which is in us, that has been imparted in us, and it flows through us through our trials and tribulations. Does anybody know what I'm saying? Do I have a witness out there that God strengthens me? The next thing I want to tell you is that everything is working together. Number seven is working together. So whatever it is that I'm dealing with, it's building my character. I want you to type that for me, please. That God is building my character. And nothing purifies our character and motives quite like the fiery furnace of trials and tribulations. And it is very important for us to know that we all need to be refined at some times. Yes, we all need refining at some time. And God uses pain to turn us into clean, pure vessels for his use. Yes, there is purpose behind your pain. Would you type that for me, please? There is purpose behind my pain because God is using it to clean me up for his service. Glory be to God. It's working together for the good. The next thing I want to tell you is that God heals. I want you to type that for me, please, in all capital letters. God heals. Can I get a witness out there? God heal me. I want you to type that. Give your testimony that God has healed me. Amen. He heals. Amen. By his stripes, we are healed. And just as God allowed Lazarus to die so that he could demonstrate his power over death by raising him back up to life, at times God will allow us physical affliction so that he can heal us for his glory. Anybody ever been healed? Yes, God will heal you for his glory so you can testify that can't nobody do me like Jesus. God will heal you for his glory. He is the great physician and he has the ability to heal what it is that is what's best for us in our particular situation. And I have seen, I've seen his healing power in ways that I am convinced that God is in control. Is anybody convinced? If you're convinced, I want you to type it in the comments. I am convinced. Thank you, Deacon Manfred. Yes, God has healed you. Thank you, Sister Tanyana. God has healed you. Thank you, Sister Lillette. God has healed you. Thank you, Sister Joyce. God is healing you right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Sicole. God is healing you right now. Somebody ought to hit the heart button for me, please. Amen. God is healing you right now. The next thing I want to let you know that everything is working together because God is developing your wisdom. God is. I want you to type that, please. God is developing your wisdom. Amen. Thank you, Missionary Hill. Yes, you are convinced. Amen. Yes, I am healed. Thank you, Sister Sicola. I see your testimony. You are healed. God is developing your wisdom. And I would estimate that a lot of the wisdom that we have gained has come during a hardship in your life. When things were not as easy as you thought they would be. Because many times when you're going through, we get dialed into God. And he can use our pain and difficult times to help us learn about life in ways that we never could have experienced in times of comfort. Amen. Yes. When you're going through, many times it strengthens your focus. Amen. I want you to get focused right now. Don't be distracted. I hear it in the spirit. I need somebody to type that for me, please. Don't be distracted. Thank you, Jesus. Don't be distracted. 
God is getting ready to clear the way for you right now. Don't get distracted. The last thing I want to tell you, if everything is working together for your good, because God gives us purpose and direction. I want you to type that for me, please. God gives purpose and direction. Amen. Don't you get distracted. And so oftentimes, God gives us direction and purpose by pointing us onto a certain path in the midst of everything working together. And God, the God that we serve, he can pull us through. Yeah, he gonna pull you through that storm into a bright new way like you have never experienced before in your life. And I wanna speak that over you right now. God is pulling you through. Glory be to God. I need somebody to type that for me, please. God is pulling you through. Hit those heart buttons for me, please. God is pulling you through through right now. And I'm getting ready to go. God is good. Amen. God is good all the time. And all the time he is good. And we serve a great God who is working every event of our lives. He's working it together for a great masterpiece. You are a masterpiece of God. Your life is a masterpiece. Just hold on and hold out and receive what I'm telling you tonight, that everything is working together for the good. It might not feel like it, but it's for the good. You might not even see it right now, but it's working for the good. Let us pray, Father, in the matchless name of Jesus. Oh God, we come to you even now. Amen, we come to you with our heart that seeks understanding right now, even in the midst of what we're going through. God, we ask for your divine providence right now. We acknowledge that your ways are higher than our ways and your thoughts are higher than our faults. And we ask that even now amidst life trials and tribulations, we sometimes struggle. We struggle to see your guiding hand. And yet we take solace in your word, which promise that all things, amen, all things work together for the good of those who love you and those who are the called according to your purpose. And when the path before us is cloudy in the fog of uncertainty and the storms of life threaten to overwhelm us, we cling to this promise that we know, we know that you are in control because you see the beginning from the end and you have a plan for our lives that is better for us now. Plans to prosper us and never to do us harm. And we thank you for these and all of the blessings in your precious son, Jesus' name we pray that every heart say amen and thank God. All things are working together for the good. Be encouraged. I want to invite you to join us on this platform at 11 a.m. on Sunday morning. This is a Psalm 150 church. We believe that everything that has breath ought to praise the Lord. So come on and get your praise on. Come on for a word of God. Come on because deliverance is happening in this place. We believe in miracles and miracles are happening in this place. I'm not going to tell somebody just now. I'm let them tell you. But God is still in the miracle working business. Amen. We love to see your face in the place. We're at 5474 Memorial Drive. Come, won't you? I don't see why don't you. This Sunday, we'll be celebrating our cultural Sunday. So we're asking that everybody come in your African attire, whatever we call that type of stuff. Just put on something. If you don't have that, just come on. Amen. Come on. Come on. We want to see your face in the place. There is a word from the Lord for the people of God for such a time as this. And we still believe in the power of prayer. We believe in the word of God that there is absolutely nothing too hard for our God. And we thank you. And God, as we leave this particular session, we ask that your that your presence be with us all until we meet again. Now unto him who's able to do exceeding 
get ready for it abundantly above anything that you can ask, think, dream, or even imagine according to the power that worketh in us. It's working together for your good. But until the next appointed time, it is our humble prayer that the glory of the Lord be revealed in you. In Jesus' name, amen.